see it's steve witty here you know it's been a long time since i've done a video and you can gather from the title that there have been reasons why um i have been a little bit fed up with the vc the title probably is a bit more overstretching than what it actually means but um yes i sort of dropped off a little bit um i had lost interest got become a little bit fed up by it all um and so i thought i'd do a video to explain why there are five little five quick reasons why this is the case so without further ado i'll start with reason one so reason one i stopped replying to comments on my last video to me when you do vc videos it's important that I feel it's important that you reply to comments. I, when I put, put my last video, I initially replied to comments, and the comments were coming further on for the week, and um, I just didn't couldn't be asked to uh, reply to them, acknowledge them. He not even put up a like. Um, I know why that happened. As I said, I do think it's a bit of a sort of written rule that where you can, you reply to at least acknowledge your comments and, and reply to them. Because people do take time out of their busy lives to actually sit down and watch, you know, have an interest in what you're, what you're showing. Um, and I sort of let that slip. Um, I then realised that might have been a bit of a malaise I was falling into a little bit here um, with it. Um, so yeah I, I, to those people uh, who, who commented and didn't receive any notification or thumbs up or comments i do apologize number two i'd stopped watching vc videos particularly in may um and maybe i just found myself just um out just just the fact it, it was just people showing records and showing records. And there have been p people that have done like um, uh, double videos. I've been in involved in a couple. Um, but I just thought, oh, to God, it, it, it's, it's, the, it's the same. And I, maybe I've got VC'd out a little bit, <laughs> which, which is a bit unusual. But yeah, I, I, other things on, the, on YouTube were catching my interest more. Um, particularly there's a guy called Martin Dugard who's a Dutch guy who cycled around the world but he's brought um, when he come back he brought himself to sort of like hillside um, properties in the Italian Alps just shells of building and he's been doing them up and a lot of the video is actually quite silent and I've been finding that very relaxing very cathartic just to watch and just very interesting and you're thinking, God, I wish I had the skills to be able to do something like that. Things like van life as well. Um, I, I've been watching highlights of US soccer on YouTube. God, I haven't watched too much football for my own good. Um, up the Saddlers. Um, yeah, it, it just I just got, I don't want to say bored. Cause that's unfair. That's unfair on all those people that make, 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 make the effort to make videos. And that's... No, I'm not saying they're boring. I just found I was just bit, maybe become a bit bored by the whole subject. Again, apologies, particularly those that did contests. And I'm going to say Martin Vinyl Scavenger, who I'm, you know, I've, I've known for a long time. I've met. I feel, I feel a bit bad about not even acknowledging the fact he had a contest. Um, and, it, you know, it, it just, it yeah. I didn't even watch what the contest is about. And like times, um, Richard McCook's uh, 10 other questions. And I think he probably highlighted a sort of little bit of malaise. I got myself in because I thought, well, I'll, this is my way. I'll get back to doing videos. I'll answer this video. And then I sat down and did these questions. And I found it was actually quite a negative experience. And if I'd have recorded that video, I'd have been come across as a right mardy pants. Um, so, yeah, again, that's what's happened. Number three, world events. I really should stop watching the news. Um, 
I, I can't say I have been affected by world events, um, particularly what's happened in Ukraine. Um, that's because I years ago I did a lot of tra travelling, backpacking around Eastern Europe, and I met someone from the Ukraine um, who got on well with. Uh, we we stayed in touch. It's a female I'm talking here, so. Um, we stayed in touch, whatever. No, no, not regular, but you know, every now and again, birthdays, whatever, Christmas time, there'd be an email flo floating around just saying how, how's life and everything. Um, and obviously, I got very concerned about her because she's got a, a t t 12 year old child, um, son, particularly when it all kicked off. I found myself getting quite upset, not knowing what was going on. And I did fling up an email, but obviously. When uh, things are, things are happening like bombs and bullets, you know, last thing you want to be doing is finding time to ping off an email. However, all is good. Um, I got made contact, uh, managed to get to make their way to Stockholm. So all is good. Hopefully, um, when I renew my passport, I can go over and see, go over and see how they are. Um, but um, yeah, that sort of upset me. I think just generally, it's everything negative. Prices are going up, oil's going up, um, food prices are going up. It's just absolutely negative. You know, how the heck we, we deserve to have this planet? I don't know, because we've buggered it up really well and truly, haven't we? Um, so there you go. Number four, on a more ha personal, happier note, um, I earned myself a bit of a promotion at work. Um, those in the UK who know me know what I do. I'm a civil servant, but I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Um, I've moved up next level. Um, obviously, you know, I've just mentioned that prices going up. That's quite useful to have a, a bit of extra income come through. So, But with that comes um, an increased workload. Um, you know, either you don't get uh, something for nothing in this world, and so I've been working quite hard. Um, so when it comes down to my downtime, I've been like playing records. Um, don't you don't get me wrong, the, you know, I mean, I've got loads of stuff I've got that I, I, I could have shown, but I haven't. Um, but it, it just feels like I just needed to switch off. And the last thing I wanted to do was actually sit down, write, prepare a video and put it, put it together, record it. I wouldn't say edit it. You can see my videos, you know, they're not um, the greatest, um, but they, they do me. But, um, you know, just actually do the actual part of planning and putting it together. I've just not felt, I've not felt inclined to have the energy to do it. But, you know, things are getting, it's, excuse me, settled down a bit. And so, yeah, I'll, you know, have maybe a bit more planning on my part to do to do things, to make things, um, make the videos, come, you know, put, put the videos together. So, um, but yeah, it's been, been, been hectic at work. It's been really busy. So, no, not really an excuse, but it is. I'm using it as one. Number five, and probably the reason that's going to get me drummed out the VC once and for all, there is more to life than records. And I say this, not as someone who you can see, I've got a load of records here. There is more to life. I think years ago I did a vinyl tag video and it's, one of the questions was, what would if yeah if this your place went up on smoke? What would you what record would you save? And I said none. I'd save that um, tapestry just behind me there, which my mum did before she died, because um, that's very much precious. These can be replaced. That couldn't. Um, and on, the only record I'm going to show in this video is this. This is uh, whoop, get it the right way up. This is Misty's big effect, uh, adventure. This is The Young Person's Guide to Misty's Big Adventure. Now, for those who have never heard of Misty's Big, Big Adventure, they're a Birmingham band. Um, very cult um, band. This, uh, led by <laughs> guy, he went under the name of Grandmaster Gareth. Um, 
and this is like a a, a best of now pete who uh, runs psychotron records my local shop um big fan of the band and he wanted to do something for him um so yeah, you know, put a vinyl release out, which is sort of like a best of, hence the Young Person's Guide. Very much sort of influenced by the title by the Young Person's Guide to King Crimson. Um, I had yet to see the band. I'd I'd been I'd met Gareth a couple of times. He'd been in the shop while I was been there. Lovely guy. Um, and, you know, very amiable guy. So on the thirteenth of May, Pete says. Um, Misty's, a, Misty's Big Adventure playing at the Hare and Hounds, King's Eve. You up to, up to go seeing it and go, yeah, okay. Um, so I went, Pete went with his wife Linda. They were looking after the merch. Um, Russ and Gary, uh, the, the local vicar at the church at Bal Balmere, uh, we all went along and it, it, was, it was a great experience. Um, great band great live i just enjoyed it a lot of love in the building um this gig had should have been taking place the first of april but a couple of members of the band had caught covid and and it went just went really well however at the end of the gig um you know band talking getting putting equipment and pete and linda were sorting out the cash for the um for the merch store and Gareth came out with one of the members and he looked at clearly agitated. He didn't, he didn't look like right in his eyes. It, didn't, it wasn't the Gareth I had met pr previously. And, and yeah, he gave Pete some money that he owed. And Pete said, no, no well, he insisted. And what happened afterwards? Um, On on the Thursday, following Thursday, the band announced that Gareth had passed away with a link to mind. It seems what happened, he took his own life, um, would be the Saturday night or the Sunday, the following day of the gig. Um, I was to miss it, must admit, I, I read it at home and it was just like, it just like floored me because I couldn't, I, uh, you know, I was finding, I, I found it difficult to comprehend that I was watching a guy on stage receiving a lot of love and affection from, um, God knows how many people, it was, it's not a big venue, the Hair and Hounds, and to find, to read that he passed his, he took his own life literally hours after the gig. I was standing next, not too far away from his dad. His brother is the bass player with the band. Um, Pete and Linda were, were absolutely devastated. They were told Tuesday, but couldn't say anything until the band made the official announcement on Thursday. And I must admit, I struggled the, the Friday. Uh, I was working from home um, Friday. I struggled. I don't know how I got through work. Um, pers uh, just, d just d trying to d deal with the, with the fact what what had happened. It turns out that the gig, a couple of hours um, pr prior to the gig, there was talk they were going to cancel it anyhow. He did, he wasn't right, but somehow he got persuaded to do the gig. And I don't know whether that might have pushed him over the edge. The fact that he felt like he had to do it. And really, if we'd have known, we'd have said, no, nah, no, you look, get yourself fit. You know, we want, we want, want you back. And it, it, it floored me. You know, I am, um, it floored Pete and Linda. Uh, I think I've never seen Pete so upset. Um, um, I think on, on, I was in the shop yesterday and he was playing it for the first time since the whole, and I'm trying to think. There's the one. Trying to think the one song. 
yeah, there's one song that he does, and he mentioned it on stage about um, someone who's got depression. And but it's a song about there's all it's all it's always better on the outside. And yeah, yeah, it, it, it floored it, it. It did floor me. Um, fortunately, I had a silver lining that I had Beardy Theory to go to, which was the week after the announcement he passed away. So I had that to look forward to. I think that was good for all in, all of us. Um, Pete and Linda went to it uh, there, and I was, I was with a group of about foot fourteen people, and it was just you know live music out in the weather. The weather was good, but me but some burnt on me nose and um, whatever. But of course, the sun uh, developed a liking for rum at breakfast. It it it, it brought it out to me. Yeah, yeah, I made it clear that. Um, I've had mental health issues previous a long time ago, um, and you know I got through it. You know, being my talk, talking to people, whatever. Um, and I think it was just a reminder to me, um, and this is probably why I'm doing this video, is to put this out, out there and, and just talk. Um, it's very easy to bottle things up. Very easy to think that um, we've all got our own lives and everybody else is just as busy. But sometimes, in the end, what we need to do is just reach out um, and you know, just say, "Hey, I'm not fine. Um, I could do with so I could do with a pair of ears at the moment." And I'm, I'm I've done it for people, and you know, and I've just nodded. I ain't, I ain't there to um, give advice. I'm there to just to listen because sometimes all it needs is someone just to pour it out. And they'll feel better for doing it. So the crux of the video is what I've given it that the, the t title it is is you know if you ever if you're ever stuck those that watch my channel re regularly if you're ever stuck and you need a, need someone to, you need a pair of ears I'm there and I'm hopefully if I'm stuck I can find a pair of ears uh, that's out there for me as well. Take care, BC.